Welcome to Off Grid Contracting. Guys, in this video today, we're going to show you a 3.4 kW solar install. And also, uh, a couple things that we want to point out while we're sharing this video today is we're using Go Power uh, inputs into the roof to show you a really affordable input. I'm um, going to show you in a confined space how to do um, solar setup so that it's very minimalized and you're still getting 60 amp service. And just wanted to show you that you can do a substantial backup uh, solar power system on a budget um, and with that said I'm gonna go up on the roof first we'll show you that then we'll step inside and also at the end of it I'm gonna break down a couple things about um, surge arresters EMP things that are out there available now and how to keep the utility service company segregated from that so that uh, if you're ever worried about EMP or um, terror strike things like that there's options for that now that we can do for you out in the field so with that said let's hit the roof and we'll start this job Okay guys, so these are Twin Peak 290 watt modules. I have shown these in videos in the past, but what I want you to understand is these are split. So even though I'm shading this part of the panel right now, this is still producing power. Um, this is important because that it's not stopping the production. So it's better to have part of something than all of nothing. So right here is a grid layout. And like I said, the Go Power plates now can go directly to the roof. And then we can go right in from that into the attic and then from there into the area. So it cuts down a lot of the issue with having to have uh, conduit uh, and et cetera, weather heads, all that. We can just go right into the structure. Um, down here, one last thing I wanna point out um, as far as layouts and stuff that we do for people um, before we go inside is that we can do multi-configuration and Z them all for whatever needs to to get around um, architectural and uh, structural, structural architecture, the layouts on the house, and etc. Um, we can work around that for you. Um, we can we can also do these Z-clips on a lot of roofs because it's cost effective. Um, a lot of people might hate on this, but it's very, very cost effective mounting. And if you want to do it on rails, we can do it on rails. But if you're doing it for prepping off-grid and you're running on a budget, I mean, this is a very cost effective thing. So with that said, let's go inside and I'll show you just how small a space we can put all this equipment in to run your solar system. Okay guys, so now we're on the inside of the structure um, to show you how small a space you can use um, to put this equipment in. I wanted to show you this is 40 inches wide and roughly about three, about three feet deep. Um, this same area, if you have a tongue box on a tiny house, this is a situation we get in sometimes also. Uh, but I just want to take you on a start. We have the inputs coming in through the Go Power inputs on the roof line. Uh, coming into the attic through the service feed into the breaker box, into the combiner box. We have our input to the charge controller and then we have the breaker coming back out of the charge controller to the battery bank. Got the charging system going here. Now there was about 3,400 watts put on the roof. We're at almost 100% state of charge and looking at 2,250 watts is coming in right now. Um, and that's off the Twin Peak 290 watt modules that are split modules um, so that if part of the module gets shaded we can still get output We've got our magnum rtr uh remote right here and keep in mind now you can go up to four units magnum units on this this type of setup now what we done is we drilled through we repurposed this closet so we took some of the shelf and built out a shelf so that we could set the battery bank set the additional batteries and then we've got the, the master unit magnum is right here the slave unit is right here now this customer didn't want the system tied into the grid at all so what's going to later happen is the generator will be added later on for input into these inverters and that will allow the customer to have generator backup aside from the utility company but if we turn around right here what we have is we have the outputs to the service. We have the breakers for them. And very simple setup is the, the transfer switch here. Um, this is letting the utility company at the top position. This is having the off grid at the lower position. So everything is separated. So, you know, you're worried about EMP, you're worried about all that other stuff. With a whole house surge arrestor inside and some other EMP options that are out there available now that we're starting to install for customers you've got the opportunity to have a surge arrestor, EMP arrestor, transfer switch to separate you from the utility company. And you can do your generator input separate. 
So, I mean, like, if you're wanting complete and utter separation from the utility grid, but also in the meantime have them available if you want to, that, that option is out there available now. Um, and lastly, pretty much, uh, the, the main kicker of this is, is the space. I mean, you can relatively store this in a small space nowadays. Um, and not have to worry about anything and as long as you've got it ventilated and you know the uh, charge controller can off vent its heat another thing is that now we do offer to put the metal backer boards in on this to help additionally dissipate the heat um, this thing is running full right now you can see my hand laying on it not burnt but um, the thing about the metal backer boards will help let airflow go behind so we like doing that on the OTG boards nowadays this midnight battery status monitor is a great addition because that with that in place you can keep an eye on your battery. You can put it outside the, the wall of the area that you've got. We can put it in different places. We can put it inside your tiny house on wheels. We've got a tiny house. There's a lot of things. Um, right now it's going into multi-point power tracking. So, I mean, as you can see, there's more power coming in than being used. Customer uh, has got their house running, uh, but for privacy, we're not showing everything. But they got their lights, fans, and everything else. Here's the air conditioning going on. This is a 240 volt unit. Um, it's it's powered on right now, running. And you can see right here that that has no effect on the solar system whatsoever. Now that momentary flicker, that is 240 volt uh, loads running along with uh, 120 volt the interchange real quick. contracted.com and until we see you again I look forward to working for you.